So this is my first competition uh, in jiu-jitsu, and this was last November in 2023, and I was in the absolute division, and the first guy I had was like probably 220 pounds, white belt. I'm a blue belt, by the way, and I weigh like 170 pounds if I eat as much as I want. Uh, So I don't cut any weight for any of this kind of stuff. Obviously not for the absolute either. And this was my second match ever. And this guy was probably 220, 230, also like a foot taller than me. And um, he is a bit older, though. And I could tell right away that he didn't really have the wrestling to challenge me, uh, even though he was a bit bigger. So what we'll do is we'll go through this matchup. I'll stop it anytime I notice anything that's super important. That might be a good takeaway for you guys. And anytime I notice something that I can do to improve my game as well. And also just point out um, other just good little tidbits. So let's get started. So right away, just notice how I'm not tying up with this guy right at the get-go. I think a lot of people in jiu-jitsu want to just tie up and just, you know, get the show on the road. Um, What I'm doing actually right here is I'm feeling him out a little bit. So I'm keeping my arms in. I'm keeping good distance. Notice how the square is really small, especially at grappling industry events. If you've ever been to one, like there's no space. So what I'm doing is I'm using angles to keep my distance because with such a small square, you would think he could close the distance quickly, but if I just keep circling, it's hard for him to close the distance. So what I'm doing is taking my time, chilling out. There's no rush in here like there is with wrestling where we kind of just get after it right away. I'm just feeling it out. And since he's a bigger guy, I don't want to play to his strengths where he can grab me and and be strong. So just chilling on the outside just to see what's going on here first. You'll notice right there, that was just like a quick little leg attack just to see how he would react. Nothing that was putting me at risk. My head was up, my back was straight. I wasn't at risk for any guillotines or anything. Still just feeling out the process. And then right there, you'll notice, oops, if I go back a little bit. So I stayed on the outside. We were playing like a wrist fighting game there. And all I did was he stepped forward and then I shot a sweep single. Now I absolutely love the sweep single against bigger guys because one, they're not as quick as us. Two, when you shoot the sweep single, you're not directly under them. If you shoot it right, you're out on the outside. So. That gives me time to make adjustments and see how he reacts and how he sprawls so that I don't get stuffed underneath. Because there's nothing worse than being a small guy, deciding to wrestle a big guy, and then getting absolutely crushed. So, shot a sweep single. And then, you can't really see it in this video, but I collected the far leg after I got the one leg secured with the sweep, and it was just an easy takedown. So one thing I want to point out here that I think is a good thing I was doing is against big guys, um, especially when at absolute at grappling industries, you finish a whole bracket of like 20 plus guys in like 45 minutes, which means you have matches back to back very fast. So I competed with another big guy right before this match, probably like two minutes before. So you really want to um, take your time when you go against a bigger guy because they're strong as hell. First off. So when you get in these positions where they're just pushing on you and you're almost in side control, take your time because the thing that'll get you the most in trouble with big guys is if you try to rush things, then they catch you off balance and then they sometimes can just use their size just to, you know, sweep you or push you right off. So take your time, notice how I wasn't rushing anything and now I'm in side control.
Now, one thing I do want to point out here is I, in my first competition, I'm, I'm a bit too nice of a guy sometimes. I ended up um, resetting with a few people, even big guys, and um, all across the competition in Blue Belt Division 2. And when we would reset, I would know sometimes these guys were being slimy and just were not letting me get back to the same position I was in. That happens a little bit in this match, but uh, I think a key takeaway is don't be nice like if you earn the position and you reset make sure you get that position back because that could be the difference between putting the match away saving your forearm saving your grip strength saving your cardio or going a full match and then having another one right after and being tired so really take the time to make sure you remember first off where exactly you were sometimes i just didn't even remember where i was um, this is not something we did in wrestling like we didn't reset positions like that if we reset, it was all it was either right back to like you know on your feet or back in referee's position on top or bottom. So remember where you are when you reset or where you were, and then be stingy. Like take that position back. Do not be the nice guy like me. And then notice I'm doing all this fighting up here, but as you'll see with a lot of people who first start jujitsu, myself included, because I'm doing it here, we get so focused on what our arms are doing or our legs are doing, that we do a piss poor job of figuring out how to use both in conjunction. So I think uh, in this particular situation here, I know I'm chilling, I know I'm, I'm in a good position, but I want to be a killer and I want to get subs and I want to get to mount in positions where I can actually attack. And I don't have jack shit when I'm in half guard. In half guard here, I can't come up and finish the arm triangle or any of that stuff. So rather than just doing some weird patty cake hand fighting up here, what I should be doing, at least in my opinion, is trying to get this leg out and actually be a killer and attack subs and go for things and not just play patty cake up here. Now that right there is actually part of a little series I do um, that I kind of got from wrestling where if you're out on the side, so let's rewind this a little bit. If you're out on the side here, what you can do is you can grab that near wrist. So I'm going under his arm and grabbing that wrist. On the other side, I'm grabbing his wrist as well. And now a really key component here is usually, let me go back a little more. Usually what you want to do is you want to slide this left knee into the gap that's right there. Even if they're in turtle position, you can actually really just jam that knee in. Now, what you can do is with your right knee, you can clamp both knees together while you have both wrists, one on the right side and one on his other side while under both arms. And then all you do is you lean to the right side and it puts this weird pressure on the shoulder that just takes them right over. It works on big guys, it works on small guys, and it's very low risk. Like if it doesn't work for me, I can just come right back up to this side position from his turtle. Um, I actually didn't even do the knee pinch here. I just felt with where his weight was that I could just take him over. So watch this again. Beautiful. Now I've got the back. I don't have any legs in or hooks in, but 
I can start working that. And getting that stuff in is a little harder on bigger guys, so I don't think I get that done here. But again, this is a really good way to get someone out of turtle and to take their back. And I lied, I definitely got the hooks in here. <laughs> I just have to learn how to finish this stuff with the bigger guys. <laughs> so when there's short time left and uh, your opponent's desperate and needs points, I, I highly recommend not just going and engaging in the hand fight, especially if you're a smaller guy like me. I noticed what I was doing. I was still staying on the outside right here to stay on the outside, chilling, waiting for him to make a mistake. His mistake is kind of just <laughs> just jumping at my head, which it's not technical at all. It's just, you know, just kind of a last ditch effort thing. Um, trying to create action, trying to get points. And from that, I can then capitalize on that and get the takedown. So let's watch that again. <laughs> so he jumps for the head. As he jumps for the head, I feel it out for a second. And then I just shoot a very easy double. And now look, we're right back in side control. So that's it guys, my big takeaways from this one are take your time on your feet, especially if you're a smaller guy, feel it out a little bit, play to the outside, don't go to their strength if they're bigger, where they can grab you with that hand fight and use that strength on you, unless you're really freaking good at the hand fight. If I'm being honest, I think I could have hand fought him and snapped him down and all that stuff, but why do that when you don't need to? Save your muscles, save yourself from fatigue. Circle, don't just back up, circle, hit angles, and that's where your leg attacks will come from. Uh, another big thing I would say is be aware of both your arms and your legs. Don't just focus on one thing. So when I was in that half guard that he had earlier in the video, and I was just playing patty cake up top, but just letting him keep my leg down below in the half guard, I, in my opinion, I shouldn't have been doing that. I should have been working with the, the goal in mind to get that leg out first and then worry about all the hand fighting and stuff once I pass and get to side control. Because I can't do anything while he has that half guard. I can't go to any of the submissions I know. I need to get that free. So one goal at a time, work on getting that leg out, find ways to get yourself to the positions that win. I would say the next big takeaway is, um, especially at the end, just don't be afraid to disengage a little bit. I'm not saying stall, but similar to the first takeaway, feel it out. Keep the distance, allow him to make a mistake in the void, and then when he crosses that void with something silly, capitalize to get that last attack, take him down. It, you don't even have to take him down, but you can if you want. If it's there, it's clear as day. Go for it and finish the match on top. So those are my main takeaways, guys. Um, I guess other than that, it's just being more of a killer. I wasn't ever really going for any subs here. Guy was strong, but I think uh, with a little more work, I could have gotten it. So... Take your time, circle when you're on your feet, don't be in a rush to hand fight for the sake of hand fighting, and really try to get to those good positions by focusing on your arms and legs and not just one or the other.